How's it going, guys? My name's Chris. I'm with my co-host, JP Fallon, and thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Success Agent Podcast, where we're going to be focusing on helping real estate agents sell more homes and spend less time and less money to do so with modern business tactics. Now, you can catch us live here every Wednesday at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on our Success Agent Facebook page. Um, we're also on other sources like iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, um, or even on LinkedIn. So pretty much if you look for us, you can find us. Now, last week we had special guest Whitney McNair. Um, Whitney is a fellow agent of EXP. She's also recently an icon agent. And we just kind of talked about how she really grew her business and what she specializes in. Um, if you haven't caught that episode and you're looking to really grow your business with out-of-state clients, um, looking to really maximize military and relocations, definitely check it out. There is a lot of information in there that you'll really, you'll really find valuable. Um, this week, we have special guest Travis, um, Travis Spears. And Travis owns a solar slash electric company. Um, Travis, why don't you give us a quick overview of your company, what you do, what you specialize in, and all that good stuff. Well, uh, like you said, my name is Travis Spears. Um, I opened up the Electric and Solar Specialist back in February of 2018. Um, we've been now running for a little over a year, and we pretty much specialize in renewable energy as well as LED retrofitting to help reduce your consumption. So, um, but we're also a full licensed electrical contractor. So we do a lot more than just solar. We're not just solar. We're not just electric. We literally do everything. Um, we do service upgrades. We do basement finishes, hot tub disconnects. Um, and we opened up because we got kind of tired of seeing what the out of state contractors were doing to our local community members. And we wanted to be able to provide a service that we felt was superior to what was being put out there. Um, and we've, we've built a very good re uh, relationship with our inspectors, um, with our, uh, county and, and city jurisdictions as far as filing for permits and, and uh, uh, taking care of everything from that aspect. Um, and we've also worked quite a bit with a few of the local realtors to do uh, inspections and inspection repairs. Um, and with us being new, it was typically with, you know, when other contractors couldn't get over to to get the repairs and stuff done in a timely manner. So we, we kind of stepped up to help out. And that's what we're here for. Cool. Now, what made you get into solar? So we're, I guess you were an electrical before and right. then you got into solar? Yes. So um, I've been serving this area doing construction since like 2001 uh, and doing electrical work since 2007. Um, in 2014, uh, we started to do a lot of uh, remote oil pads that needed solar systems and stuff to help with the control voltage for all of their remote oil sites. So we started to do that with battery backups and um, I spent a lot of time on DC systems that uh, I, I really kind of saw what the direction this stuff was going and how very useful it was. Um, and it became more of kind of a passion for me. So I jumped more into it, did a lot more research, spent about 18 months really, really dialing into the, the, you know, the best products that are on the market. Um, what's going to help save me time? What's going to help me get this stuff installed quicker? Uh, what has a better return on investment? What has uh, more of a, a American-made products? Um, and we really found a system that that kind of got us into. Um, and when we opened up, we literally hit the ground running. And we've installed systems uh, up to 24.36 kilowatts, which is just under what our state legislated uh, requirements are for net metering, which is 25 kilowatts. And there's, there's a lot of people, even solar contractors that are popping up everywhere that have never touched a system of that size. Um, I'm not opposed to going bigger, but we have a lot of requirements inside the state of Wyoming that uh, kind of limit what our, um, what we're able to do. So the 25 kilowatts um, and under for residential and commercial applications is really what we focus on. So. Okay, cool. And has that really started to take on um, in the, you know, in the year, you said it was a year and a half that you've been in business and specifically in solar, right? Just over a year. <laughs> we opened up okay. February 5th of 2018. So Nice. Well, congrats on the recent anniversary. Um, has that really started to pick up pace? Yeah. Um, so, of course, as you open up a business, it takes a lot just to get your name out. And then it takes right. a lot for people to start trusting you and what you do. Um, I was fortunate that I've spent a lot of time in this industry as an electrician that people around here, I, I've done so much work on so many of the buildings in this area. I've helped build many very high profile buildings um, that my name was already known. Um, so that kind of helped keep me busy as I first opened up. 
Um, but then as solar became more of a thing, uh, we did our first solar project in July of last year. And uh, we, we got that knocked out in about five days. And it, like, that was the big one, the almost 24 wow. kilowatts. <laughs> um, and I, we are finding that our systems are right about 35 to 40 days of uh, signed contract to the date the, the system's been installed. So we're extremely quick with our stuff. I do all the revisions and stuff on all the permit documents before I even submit them for permitting. This way we know that they're correct. If there's ever any questions from the uh, attorneys, or not the attorneys, the, uh, um, the authority having jurisdiction, which is like the inspectors for the county or the, or the city, uh, if there's ever questions, they call me directly. We can walk through it and I can show them exactly the reason why we sized the way we did, how we're doing things. And it's it's still kind of new even to them. So I have I've had to educate mm. them a little bit on some of the stuff as well. But um, I, I carry a master's, excuse me, a master electrician's license in two different states. We've been doing this for quite a while now as far as the electrical side. So we have a very good understanding of how the electricity side works. And we can explain to you why the products that we use on the solar side and, and how the system ultimately is going to help you um, reduce your consumption or even eliminate your bill hundred percent. So. so tell us about what is it, what is the net metering? What does that mean? So the net metering is actually what's going to save you from having to do batteries. Uh, the way the Wyoming state net metering agreement works is um, anything you overproduce on your solar system versus what you're using from the grid will go mm -hmm. onto your account through the utility company and they'll give you a credit kilowatt for kilowatt. So now you don't have to have batteries to store your power to use it when the sun is down. So say uh, when the sun comes up, you're starting to produce power, you're not home. So it's going onto your account as a credit. Then at nighttime, when you come home, the sun is down, you're no longer producing power. You're able to pull from your bank or your credit hours instead of mm -hmm. using the utilities power. So you're effectively making your own electricity and they're storing it for you. So with that being said, you, you're, you're gonna pay a uh, connection fee uh, like, for example, Black Hills Energy, uh, it's $13 a month plus their franchise fees and taxes. Um, I literally, I don't pay anything more than $14.05 a month to be connected to the grid, but I build all of my own power through my solar system. So, and then at the end of the year, when they true it up, uh, which is December 31st, January 1st, anything you've left on the grid that you've produced with your solar system, they will buy it back from you at 3.9 cents a kilowatt. Uh, if you're with High West, they buy it back at like 2.6 cents a kilowatt. So it's a little bit less with them. And they also have a higher um, connection fee. But I think it's basically because they're a co-op. So it's also kind of uh, operator owned as well as resident owned system. So. Yeah. So some, what are the uh, biggest questions or misunderstandings that you find with industry professionals, such as realtors or appraisers, inspectors? You know, what's that disconnect that a lot of these people are missing? Um, I think a lot of it is everyone thinks that we have to use batteries. Um, okay. And I really, even on, on off-grid systems, I, I try to talk people and make sure that they're well aware that the off-grid system is, is very, very uh, applicable to a very few number of people. And the mm -hmm. reason why is because people really kind of lie about how much energy they really use. You know, if you ask them how long the TV is on, they're like, ah, it's on for maybe an hour a day. When in all reality, it's on in the background and along with the radio and you're not using it, but on an off-grid system, you have to be very conservative with how much you use. Otherwise, your batteries will deplete and then you have no power for the nighttime when you when you really want it. And you can't uh -huh. do it because the sun's not up. So, um, okay. so that's the first thing. What, what's another another disconnect? So batteries, we don't need them. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, definitely not a mandatory thing. Um, I think the other disconnect would be that... Uh, one thing I'm finding right now is when you install a solar system of getting the return on investment as far as property value. Um, yeah. We have independent studies that are done by Berkeley that show homes value increases with solar at $2.93 per watt. So, with, for example, with our systems, the return on investment is typically less than 10 years um, and it has a 25 year warranty. Well, <clears throat> there's many different ways to look at the actual return on investment because now you're no longer paying an electrical bill. So, what it would take for you to pay off your system by using what you were paying for your electrical bill is usually less than 10 years. Um, but if you look at the other aspect of increasing the home value, you're literally going from, um, say the system was a five kilowatt system, right? Which is kind of typical for most homes in this area between about five and six kilowatts. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pull up my calculator real quick, just to kind of give you some quick numbers. But if you did a five kilowatt system, um, 
say a typical install would run you on that roughly 17,000. Uh, after your federal tax credit, which is 30% until the end of 2019, um, you're into that system for about $12,075. So that system, if we didn't have to do anything as far as panel upgrades or anything else, typically is gonna have a return on investment of less than 10 years. I've had one system that was five years, seven months. I've had a couple systems mm. that were just over 10 years and it was based on having to do panel upgrades and panel changes and uh, a lot more additional work. But um, so now with that system, if we did, so they're into it for about $12,000 after their federal tax credit, right? And that was a five kilowatt system. So if that home value increases by $2.93 per watt, it actually increases the home by 14,650 bucks. They're gaining $2,000 more than what they put into the house, do it to, you know, as far as solar, right out the gate. So the return on investment based off that independent Berkeley study is you actually get more bang for your buck by doing solar than you would by doing say a $30,000 kitchen remodel. So hmm. it's, it's definitely a very, uh, in my eyes, very, very uh, invest, like applicable investment for, for home value. Right. Are you seeing a lot of people who are about to sell their home get solar or is it for more new home buyers that they get it? So typically it seems like uh, new buyers or someone that's been in the house for a while, someone that's going to be in that house for a while. Um, and I think a lot of it is because nobody wants to put that type of money into a property and then sell it. Um, right. But for example, like if you're military and you get orders to go overseas and you already own a house and you just did a system, don't be afraid of it because you're able to recoup most of that system, if not more than what you put into it. Hmm. So even if you're not using the system, so let's say you're military, you go overseas and you're, everything's pretty much shut off, that actually that system will start paying for itself because you're getting money back in a way? So if they left their house vacant and it was running like minimum 45 <laughs> degrees for heat and they're able to harness the sun and not use any, like any more electricity than they were typically using, then they're actually going to build that bank of, of power. And at the end of the year, the power company, utility company is going to actually send them a check. So I, I did my system on my house in November of last year, uh, had it commissioned. Um, January 1st, I had a check from Black Hills Energy for, I think it was like 160 bucks. So my system's a little bit different. I kind of overbuilt my system um, because it's <laughs> a big advertisement in my neighborhood as you pull in. That's true. Uh, but it's- They can see from the stars. <laughs> I really, I, like, I don't recommend overbuilding it more than about 120 to 130%. And the only reason why I even go a little bit over is A, for aesthetics, just to make sure that the, the array itself looks good. Yeah. Um, and B, the way our net metering works, if it resets in January, typically you don't have enough sun hours in January um, to offset your power consumption 100%. But that check that you got for anything you've left on the grid from the previous year is usually enough plus your production to cover your entire electrical bill for January and February. But I, I like, I, I'm very transparent. I want to make sure my customers understand that if we do a solar system, you may have a small bill in January and February, but by the time March and April you know, comes around, you're starting to produce enough power to offset your consumption hundred percent and you won't have a bill for the rest of the year. Gotcha. So I think you actually bring up a good point in a, uh how it looks. Do you ever get complaints about, oh, I don't want these big ass panels on my roof or. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's come a long way from say the eighties, you know, like the old uh, passive solar systems where they have this huge structure built on top of their roof and they have it to where they're harnessing the heat and then they have it ducted in the house. So our system is hundred percent different than what they do. You know, there's, there's many different solar aspects in the solar world. And what we, actually cater to is the solar electricity side um, and that's typically it but the panels that we use are black on black they're black framed and we use those because they are much more at least aesthetically pleasing than using like a gray frame or yeah. a white backing we want something that's going to kind of blend in um, they also now make a skin it's almost like a window tint that you would use for a car that you can uh, make your panels look almost identical to the shingles that are on the roof. So then it blends in even more. It will kind of shorten up the, uh, the efficiency of that panel. It will, you know, of course, reduce it by about three to 4%. But those who really want to kind of get away from seeing black on black or a black panel on a roof, um, we can do that. So. Gotcha. Um, so I wanted to ask you actually, so you know how Tesla had this or not Tesla, uh, Elon Musk had that big announcement that he's going to get those really small solar panels that look like shingles. Is that even a thing? Where, where is that? 
so there's actually a couple of different companies that are that are doing that. Um, I'm not I'm not a big proponent for those yet. Um, and the biggest reason why is we, we don't know whose work it is. We don't know is it the roofers that are putting that stuff in, and right. then we have to figure out how to tie it together. Um, they say they're a 60 year or 70 year shingle. I don't know what the proficiency or the efficiency of those panels themselves are yet. Um, until we have more research, I would rather sell you a product that is proven and going to work instead of just a name. Like, don't get me wrong. Tesla has some fantastic products out. They're very innovative. Um, but if we have something that's going to outperform it, I'd rather give you something that's, that's a much better product than just sell you a name. So, right. And it's probably cheaper too, right? The traditional way. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how much those uh, Tesla shingle roofs are. Um, they're, they're definitely pretty costly. I, I know that uh, like the Tesla uh, battery backup, the Tesla Powerwall, um, my, the battery systems that we typically use actually outperform them three to one. You're replacing those Tesla batteries about every five years. So when you're looking at the overall cost and over the 15 years of you know, the usage of that, you're, you're going to get much bang, much more bang for your buck by using the, the battery system that we use. Okay, cool. And with batteries not really being a requirement, um, so I know that battery technology is one of like the technologies that's lagging the most behind. I guess that's not really affected by, or solar isn't affected by that issue. Right. Um, if batteries were to get better, do you think that they would play a more important role within solar? Like you could store your power and put it in your Tesla or like mitigate it somewhere else. Do you like, is that yeah. like a possibility? I, I absolutely see that coming and I see it more coming, not because of technology, but because of the way the utility companies are changing the way they bill. So for example, I'm sure you're well aware down in Colorado, they've already started time of use billing. So they're, they're hitting you with a higher yeah. utility rate between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. and then from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And they're doing that because that's when you're home. You have, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> right. <laughs> if, if, say, you work nights, then of course you're going to be up during the day and you'll be paying a much less reduced rate. Well, Wyoming hasn't hit that yet. Wyoming is typically three to four years behind everywhere else. That, that uh, time of consumption or time of use billing, it's happening. It's happening all across the nation. And when that finally does hit here, that's when those batteries are going to make much more, um, mm. much more of, of, of sense to, to put in. Um, typically, what we have, we can actually retrofit our batteries in at any point in time. But right now, with the cost of the batteries, I don't recommend it. I don't push it because the cost of them is really high. The technology is there, too. But it's kind of like how solar was six years ago. You know, you couldn't get a solar system installed for less than nine dollars a watt. And now it's come down. You're talking three to four bucks a watt versus nine bucks a watt. Um, we're batteries now. You know, you're talking for some of our like ecosystems that we have. You're talking twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars just for the battery system. That's not including the install and everything else. If you wanted to do uh, we have an AC battery system through one of our, our suppliers that we use. Um, and that one, you can actually store your power and then program it to only pull from the batteries during that peak billing cycle, turn, burn, during that uh, time of use billing. So you can only pull from batteries between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. So now you're completely cutting them out uh, as, as far as the utility company. Um, but the other thing is if you overproduce, you can also store it and then you can use it whenever you want. So it, there's, there's a couple of different reasons. It just, to me right now, the cost effectiveness will fall in place when we have time of use billing. Gotcha. That's an interesting point. Um, so for any, so let's say we have a client who's considering solar. What are some really important things that we can know? You know, we obviously, we don't want to know the, all the details. That's what you're there for, but what are some important points or aspects that we can point out for our clients just to point them in the right direction? So a one size does not fit all, right? We, we don't base anything off the of square footage of the house because how you use 3000 square feet versus how I use 3000 square feet. I got two kids that leave lights on everywhere. Uh, maybe we have everything that's LED so that it, our consumption is a lot less than most homes, but mm -hmm. everything is different. And I tailor everything to each individual customer's needs. Um, so I base it off of your most current electrical bill. Uh, it gives me a 13 month snapshot into how, you, how much power you use, when you use it and how often you're using it. So I can base a annual production or annual um, an estimated annual production off of your annual consumption. So everything is really tailored more to you, like on pretty much all aspects of it. And then once we design the system, you, we can make changes right there on the fly before we send it to permitting and engineering. So, but yeah, we, we, we do all aspects of it. So. 
Okay. So one thing that you'd say is one size doesn't fit all. Right. What are some other important aspects that we can know as industry professionals? Um, we don't have to put it on the roof. Uh, we also yeah. do ground mount systems. Um, okay. I actually recommend ground mount systems if you have the area and if you don't mind using some of that real estate for it. Uh, biggest reason why is because we can make a smaller system because we can set the angle to where it's going to be the most uh. prime angle for production or at least for harvesting of the sun in this area. Um, I can't tell you how many ground mounts that we've done, but uh, they, they perform very well. Uh, our systems also come with a lifetime monitoring. So you actually get to see what your system is doing uh, today. Every 15 minute snapshot, it'll tell you like the last seven days, the last month, and then also the lifetime that it's been installed. So you actually get to check out every individual panel individually and see exactly how each one's performing. Gotcha. So as a ground mount, would that actually be cheaper to set up, but perform just as well? Cause you're going to need less materials. Uh, there's a little bit more labor when it comes to ground mounts and uh, more wouldn't... material. Right. Yeah. But, uh, and of course you have trenching. So there's that, there's a little added cost there. Um, but there's a couple of differences. For example, on a roof mount, uh, say we get a, our, our hailstorms that come in, right? Very common. Um, I don't have to worry about my panels getting broke, but I do have to worry about your roof needing to be replaced because it got damaged from the hail. So then we got to remove the system from the roof, let the roof be replaced and reinstall the system and recommission it. And typically that's covered all by your homeowner's insurance um, because now it's an external structure. Uh, there's a couple of different insurance companies that, that uh, insure them a different way. Um, yeah. but most common that we found is that they insure as an external external structure and they are usually insured up to like 25 to twenty eight thousand dollars and you're looking at a difference of about seven bucks a month maybe 11 bucks a month so it's not huge um and then most of them want to insure it for like the cost of systems so say your system ran the seventeen thousand dollars that we talked about earlier like for that five kilowatt system right that's not gonna cost you seventeen thousand dollars for me to remove it and reinstall it you've already bought the equipment um, we did a removal and reinstall for a house up in uh, on Panorama Drive uh, out north of Cheyenne. And I think we were into that for about 5000 to remove the system, reinstall it, and recommission the entire thing. So, Okay, gotcha. So if, um, if the uh, average homeowner owns a home for five to seven years, how do you, what's the sales pitch there for solar? Um, so biggest thing is you're going to pay that bill no matter what. Whether you're paying it to yourself with a solar system or whether you're paying it to a monopolized utility because you don't get a choice of who you get to bring power to your house. So it's really, it, those are the, the two biggest points. Um, but if you're going to use it as an increased value to your home and then also spend five years there without paying a utility bill, I, I, I think there's a lot of pros to that too as well. So really it's, it's a, <clears throat> it's an absorbed cost regardless. So you're either paying utility company or paying solar it's the, it's the long-term benefit where, where it tends to pay off is what you're saying. Um, and that's, that's what we were talking about earlier. I'm kind of torn on that because the increased value to the home with the solar system being installed, it also shows that they, those homes sell 30% faster than any other house that's on the market, which here really doesn't mean much because you put a house on the market, you got five offers that afternoon and right. the houses here are getting snatched up pretty quickly. Right? So <clears throat> that, it, it'll play a point I'm sure at another point in time, but most people seem like they're not afraid of solar when it's already installed on a house. Some people seem like they're more afraid of it if they're the ones that are doing the install or if they're the ones that are hiring to have the install done. Um, so basically what you're saying is somebody has to be the first one to do it. <laughs> right, right. It's, it yes. So you're, you're asking for volunteers is what you're telling me. <laughs> kind of, I guess. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, I mean, it, somebody had to get on the moon for the first time and that probably cost them a freaking fortune. And then they got cheaper and cheaper after they kept making more trips, I guess. Right. So. And, and absolutely. I mean, look at this cost of solar now versus what it was, you know, and well, what I'm seeing on like the out-of-state contractors versus my pricing and stuff. Um, the products that we use uh, with the microinverter technology, they come with a 25 year warranty. So my systems have a 25 year warranty and they have usually a 10 year return on investment. If you're looking at just the cost of the system versus the cost of your electric, your, your utility bills. Um, my, the out of state contractors that are throwing this stuff up, they're using string inverters that have a 10 year warranty and you can't add to that system. So if you, hmm. if you don't plan on adding to that system and then say four years down the road, now your, your electrical needs have changed and now you want to add panels and you know, whatever, 
now you have to completely change out your inverter because your inverter is not sized properly. Well, whatever you paid for that inverter, now that just became a paperweight because you can't, nobody's going to rebuy it. It only has a 10 year warranty and you're already into it for four years. Mm-hmm. So now you got to replace that inverter with a, an oversized one or a, an upsized one. You got to pull new circuits in. Where with my systems, I can add to them. It's a modular system. Phone. What's that? The modular system like Legos. It, it, take essentially. Put a new one in. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a lot like plug and play where I can add right to my racking system. I can add right directly to my branch circuits on my on my panel strings. Um, yeah, there's there's I always set it up for adding on to in the future. So if we're only running like say 20 amps of solar, um, I usually set the combiner box to where we can put up to 60 amps of solar on it. So you never have to worry about adding on to it. Hmm. So it sounds like if you're looking to do this, you should find someone who geeks out on solar versus <laughs> someone who just says they can do it, right? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions in this area. There's a lot of people who will sell it to you and they can't explain to you how it works. They, they, don't, they have no clue. Um, and then you also have the installers who have zero formal training. Um, and all of our staff, they're all licensed electricians. Uh, we put them through a four-year apprenticeship program. Once they get done with that, they have the Wyoming State Journeyman's license. Um, if we have only solar techs, then we will be sending them through NABSEP training. So this way they have the training that they're supposed to have to do this install. It's actually, so are those the certifications people should be looking for when looking for an installer? Absolutely. Absolutely. And make sure they're licensed. So in, in the city of Cheyenne alone, like they have a, an additional solar contractor's license. I'm, I'm probably $900 deep in all my licensing just in this area f- per year. Um, so it, I, I definitely hold a lot of value in that because I know that we're qualified to do what we do. Okay. And what are those certifications real quick again? Um, so in order to do the electrical tie-in, it must be done by a licensed electrical contractor, which we are. Um, in order to do a solar install and provide a solar design, you must be a licensed solar contractor, mm-hmm. which we are. So we carry all of that. Um, we're licensed throughout the entire state. So pretty much almost any, any county areas, but every city also has their own licensing. So if you're working inside of a city as an electrical contractor, you have to have their, their city contractor's license as electrical. Um, why, Cheyenne's the only one that's a little bit differently as far as what I've found so far. Um, but they require that solar contractor's license. And you have to actually go in front of the licensing board, uh, present them with your, um, your experience. Uh, and and they, they just kind of talk with you about what you do, what you've, what you've known, where you've gotten your training. And if they feel that you're, you're qualified, they'll issue you a license. But we have all of our stuff gets inspected with uh, all you know, the city inspectors, the county inspectors. Um, and they, they see us on a pretty regular basis. So it's, yeah. it's going well. So we kind of talked last night about... Um having issues, like you want to talk to an appraiser so you can kind of review, you know, the benefits and the Berkeley study that you were talking about. Uh, What do you think that, why do you think appraisers don't see the value that you see? Obviously you're a little bit biased, but what's the Um, difference there? um, I think a lot of it is just because it's a variable that's kind of unknown. You know, it's, it's still semi new to this area. And, and just like we had talked last night, we kind of discussed that we didn't have a whole lot of homes for them to compare each home to that had solar on it. Well, in December of 2017, right before I opened up my business, just in December, which is usually one of the coldest, most terrible months, you know, um, there was 53 homes in Laramie County that went solar just in that month. I now have a stack of, of all the in, uh, installs that were done in the, uh, in the whole year of 2018 for Laramie County, as well as for the city of Cheyenne. And there's like 27, 28 pages of how many houses have gone solar. So it's, it's happening all over. So we're going to have that start to develop and, and see a lot more of that. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's other things I, I, I would like to see happen. For example, I'd like to see like a, a green MLS. So if there's a, a home that has solar or wind, uh, wind turbines, that those are able to go onto a green MLS. So when people are looking for green homes, then you have that whole listing of everything that's available that has solar that's that's available, you know, for purchase. So we've had uh, several uh, contractors try that here. Yeah, and it's still they're out of the. I think there's only one or two left out of the. We had at least four at one point that were doing green homes. Yeah, you no, know, they were doing hers ratings and you know making sure everything was high efficiency and all that right. stuff. And their whole sales pitch was. 
save one month in payments if you go green. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yes, I get that, but then you're also paying, you know, a premium or the perceived the amount that's a premium, you know. Because, I mean, when everything else is premium, you can't be, like, premium, premium, you right. know? It's really right. hard to, like, that's not a good way to sell. Yeah. You're like, hey, now that you're already out there at the top of the food chain, we're going to add another category called the food food chain. <laughs> 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 you just can't, like, it's already too hard to, you know, so I think a lot of it, you know, the Boulder, Colorado mentality hasn't quite come up to Cheyenne yet, so I don't think a lot of people care so much of that. And I think so I'm not looking so much at like just energy efficient. I'm looking at more of something that has a renewable or something that's creating its own energy. Right. Like, and I think, I mean, if you, if you would have heard how long it took for us to get recycle cans up here, dude, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, the mentality of, of, of saving the planet up here is, they're like, dude, we're cowboys, you know, <laughs> in the freaking field every day. Who cares? Like it smells like methane every day here. So, you know, so I think uh, it's, it's, it's an education piece. It's, it's, right. it's not a, I don't think you're going to get people to jump on the bandwagon and be like, hurrah, let's save the planet. You know, like it's, I Absolutely. think, but, but people love free or cheap or mm -hmm. save money. Right. So I think what, what ends up having to happen is somehow saving the planet and saving me money have to mesh together. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yep. it, it, it's funny you bring that up. Cause that's one thing I always talk to people about is that you, you really, there's only a couple of reasons that people go solar. You know, you either have those who are like super tree hugging hippies that that's all they want, you know, and they want to completely live off grid until they realize what off grid really means. <laughs> and then you have, uh, the very conservatives that realize that the numbers make sense. You know, you're going to pay it no matter what, whether you pay uh, your, your utility bills and then every year a 5% increase in rate, or do you pay yourself by doing a solar system and not pay that utility and not pay that 5% increase? Yeah. So it, it's, it becomes pretty huge. You know, I, um, the system on, on one of the houses I just sent out as a proposal, it was, I want to say it was like eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars for the total system, but it has a breakdown and it's kind of conservative, about a four percent increase in utility costs over the next twenty-five years. Over that twenty-five years alone, it was showing that it was going to save them like ninety-four thousand dollars in their in their utility costs. Seventeen thousand yeah. dollars sounds pretty good for a ninety-four thousand dollars savings. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the huge. That's the that's the that's what it comes down to. Like, okay, if I do this now how is it going to save me money later? Right. Well, it's kind of like buying a, a used electric vehicle. Like you buy it after it's already depreciated. You buy it after, you know, um, and then you calculate your gas costs. You figure out how much you commute. You figure out how many miles you're driving. And then you figure out, okay, if I have to hold this vehicle for a certain amount of time to get my money back, and even though it's even it's a little bit higher today, but if you if you keep your vehicles for five to six years, you know, and I don't, so but <laughs> for the, there's a lot of people that do. I mean, if you just see some of the busted ass vehicles that are on the roads around here, oh, and, yeah. um, and, but eventually it's gonna not only is it you're gonna recoup those costs, but it's also gonna save you a ton of money long term, you know, long term. Right. So, yeah. I mean. But yeah, it's people, interesting. People just don't do the math. I mean, like a lot of people just look at it as it's 17 grand. Hell no. You right. know? And then they just go, why would I do that? I'm only going to be in this house for whatever, whatever. And it's like, nah, dude, you're not looking at it from the right perspective. You got to look at it from, if you break this down and do the actual math, like if you're even in this house eight years, you know, you're going to get a check for five grand when it's all said and done. Plus, you know, if legislation and the trends and all that stuff, I mean, believe it or not, Cheyenne in, at least in the housing sector is moving just a little bit faster than what we would think it is. Um, I think a lot of the, there's newer talent getting involved in, and in trying to change some things. And I think that that's eventually going to be the, the norm, um, especially now that we're seeing like these, these ridiculous prices for houses that we've never seen before. Right two and three, four offers within 24 hours. I mean, 
I've been in this business for 10 years and I haven't seen an industry, you know, a climate like we're having right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great. And, but it's also, um, kind of scary because I, I, you know, it's like, if we have like, you know, real estate apocalypse around here where there's all these buyers that need houses and we got nothing to give them, you know, builders can't build that fast. Right. You don't want them to, you don't want a house that's been put up and down in two months. I've seen that happen. And I, I, it was like a gingerbread house by the time it was done, just because I was like, what? But anyways, um, that kind of brings me to a point too, that you're just mentioning as far as like building and having it done that way. Uh, we've also had some commu- uh, communications with some of the local builders. We have a home that we're doing from the ground up. We're doing all the electrical, we're doing the service, we're doing a, a complete home wire. We're also prepping it for a 40 by 60 pull bar and to be added at a later date. And we're putting in a 27 panel ground mount to completely offset their electrical bill right out the gate. And he has that entire thing incorporated with his mortgage payment. Yeah. So he was able to finance that solar system for 30 years. You know? It makes it much more appealing when it's already built into the house. You totally. Know? You can yeah. design the whole house around, the, you know, if you want to design it around the solar or whatever you want to do, or, right. you know, give it its own little picket fence around the solar <laughs> panels. But, <laughs> You know, there's women out there watching going, I, <laughs> I can make that pretty in my yard, unless it's, <laughs> I'm just saying, we're going to put a little garden in the front, you know, and I can stare at the panels in the back, you know, right. Wallet, you know, it's party in the front, <laughs> you know, party in the back and business in the front. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry for you that are watching that have mullets still. I apologize. I didn't. <laughs> So actually, I wanted to, so when I was at a recent convention um, or, or summit, there was a guy proposing the idea of a solar farm. So instead of everyone getting a solar panel, at least this is the way I understood it, um, they buy a big plot of land and they put a bunch of solar panels on it and that generates the electricity for whoever subscribes to it. Right. Um, what are the benefits or the cons? What, what's the pros and cons for that versus you know getting your own system and building it on your own house? So uh, there's a couple things that happened with that. Um, here in Wyoming, that was actually proposed through legislation and they shut down the idea of a community solar project. So uh, we are trying to draft some, some literature and stuff to pass laws to allow for that, um, to where you can do a solar system to help a, like a residential neighborhood, just that one. Mm-hmm. So then whatever is produced, it would go to each house. You know, Of course it has to be broken out evenly because Again, how each house uses their electricity is going to be different. So we want to make sure that everybody's getting the same amount, you know, but that's, that's the hard part that has to be figured out as far as the legislation and everything else. Um, there is a utility company that has approached me about building a solar farm. Um, and what they want to do is they want to build that farm and then charge their customers uh, three cents more per kilowatt than what they're currently charging them because it's green energy. Right? <laughs> well, that same customer can put their own system on their own house and reap their own benefits instead of having to worry about buying green energy from a utility company. I don't know. <laughs> my, my, my morals kind of come into play on that. You're talking millions of dollars worth of work. I'd love to see that stay local, but at the same point in time, I'd rather provide that homeowner, that customer with their own system that's tailored to their exact needs and let them reap the benefits of it. So, and, and we're not just doing the install and walking away from it. We're, we're here to be, you know, uh, supporting that, that install and that investment for the next 30 years. Mm-hmm. We offer a uh, biannual pa- uh, panel cleaning. So we go out there twice a year, clean all the panels from all the bird deposits, the dirt, the dust, any trash around the area. We dial all the way into the system and verify that every, like all the communications are, are operating correctly. We monitor the system as long as the customer allows us to monitor it. So if there is a communication failure, it comes to us as well as to them. We both get an email. And with, at that point, I have to see my emails every day, you know, running a business. So if there is a communication failure, I can get somebody scheduled to get out there pretty quickly to get that taken care of. So their, their production kicks back up. You know, that's the last thing we want is for them to realize that, hey, this isn't producing. And it's been three months now. Well, you just lost three months of production. And if that happened over the summer, that could be very detrimental to your, your annual production. But yeah, yeah, that's lots of logistics and in, in, involved. It, it reminds me of remember that carbon credit crap that they were trying to pull years ago, where everything had like a certain carbon emissions cr- like to it. And you, if you do, you remember that? No, that was like years ago. I think that was back in the nineties. 
Yeah, I, I, I do remember a bit of that. Yeah, I don't remember that. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty funny though that I mean it only makes sense that uh, utility companies are trying to actually monopolize solar power. It's um, I'm not surprised by that, but we're gonna we're gonna harness the sun and charge everybody <laughs> for it. <laughs> well, and that, they want to tax the sun. They're they're trying to figure out all these ways, you know, and and it's it's definitely frustrating on on this side of it to see what they're trying to do, um, but it's 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 tough, you know. I mean, is it is so the solar energy that the panel actually takes in? Is it like a certain like ray that it's absorbing, or what? I mean, what is it? So even if it's sun or cloudy out, um, it's it's still going to produce power, but it, it's bringing in basically the the UV rays and and it's harnessing that into the cells and creating DC power. Okay. Um, the difference between what we do and, you know, with our microinverters versus what the string inverters are doing is we're turning that DC power into AC immediately. So you have 240 volts of AC power going down the side of your house to your combiner box. On the string inverter system, you can have upwards of a thousand or more volts of DC going down the side of your house. And now, again, I've been doing electrical work for going on 13 years, and I would much rather be dealing with 240 volts AC then even have to deal with 100 volts of DC. DC is a very dangerous uh, voltage. It, it, it's very unforgiving. Um, and for me, I'd rather put in a system that's gonna be much more safe for that house, not just for yourself, but your kids, your family, anyone that's around it. it to me, it's, 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 it's a much better product. So but, explain to our audience for those that are, you know, electric dumb, uh, AC versus DC. I, I mean, I know, cause I, well, I've seen the band, you know, but. Yeah. <laughs> But outside of that, I mean, you got to explain to our audience, like, what is it that you mean? Because I know people see it on like the back of their little plugins and stuff like that, but they don't. They don't right. Know so um, your AC is typically what runs everything inside your house. And it's an alternating current. So it goes back and forth. And we have a 60 hertz um, frequency here in, in, in the U.S. So that means it's going back and forth 60 times every second. DC is a direct current. It means that it's only flowing one direction. Once you break it, it's very unforgiving. DC also arcs a lot more. So any device that's on, on that system requires to be a very fast opening device. If it doesn't, then your that electricity will arc from one point of uh, um, either anything that's, that's able to be energized. So any metallic part because electricity very much loves metallic or metal pieces. So if you don't open it fast, you'll see that arc go all the way across from one point to another. And it's, it's, it's just unforgiving by all means, but your, your, your AC power is, is controlled through your circuit breakers with arc fault or GFI protection. Their trip settings are so much faster. So if something does happen, it's opening immediately. So it, it's going to keep you safe. Mm. Nice. Gotcha. Cool. Well, is there anything you wanted to add um, for our audience? Um, I guess if, if there's any other further questions from anyone directly in the audience, or if you want to get a hold of me or something, I can absolutely uh, help you out in any aspect. Um, all of our proposals that we set up, they're 100% free. I don't charge to come in and, and show you the size of the system we could do, design a system. I, I, I don't charge for that. Um, ultimately, like we discussed, once you show them the numbers, it makes sense. And, and, and that's what we want to make sure that we're able to do with you guys. Um, we also very much promote local labor, local, local um, sourcing of, of materials and stuff. Uh, we are trying to work with local banks and developing a direct uh, to our customers, a solar financing option, um, whether it be like a HELOC or a construction loan. Um, but there is a couple of banks here locally that are offering uh, discounted APRs for green or renewable energy type services on your house. Uh, you can take them out to 10 to 12 years. It, 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 there's a lot that's going to be based off of how much equity you have, uh, what's your debt to income ratio. You know, so there's still going to be some variables, um, but I'm, I'm not the banker. I, that's not really stuff that I know. I, I know the electrical, I know the solar, and I want to get you in touch with those guys who can take care of that. Let, I will absolutely do everything I can what, with what I do and what I you know, perform well at and get you taken care of. So great. And how can they get a hold of you? So you can call us directly. Uh, our business line is uh, 307-631-0805. Uh, that's actually going to go direct to me. Uh, we have multiple um, journeymen that are in the field that also have contacts that we can get you to. Um, 
you can also email me. It's uh, tspears at electricandsolar.com. Uh, our website is uh, being revamped and set up. So you can also check out our website and contact us through that for now. Um, but just keep in mind that within the next probably two to three weeks, it'll be a completely new website. And that is electricandsolar.com. Um, you can also Google us directly. Uh, I know that it's it's taken a bit to be on the Google listing because we're still a new company. But uh, yeah, we're just the electric and solar specialists. We're right here in Cheyenne. If you also want to contact uh, like the local authority, uh, whether it be the city's office or ask them, um, they'll get you my contact information as well. But uh, yeah. Uh, also, we have a Facebook page. It's uh, at Renewable Wyo um, or the Electric and Solar Specialist. That you can search either one of those, and we'll pop mm -hmm. right up. And for our out-of-state listeners, um, do you provide like a consulting type work for just helping people navigate the solar world? Uh, yeah, we actually have a company that we teamed up with that does all of our generator backup systems for for our homes that we're doing, and they're actually licensed in Colorado as well too. So. Um, they're a full licensed electrical contractor, but they only want to do the generator side. So we have kind of teamed up with them to help them out on that side. But uh, yeah, if you reach out to us, we can get you set up with them as well, too. So. Great. Cool. And JP? Do you, have a, do you have an offer for our audience? So, yeah, uh, one thing we were talking about is doing something to help you guys out as far as like all the realtors and stuff. And I, I'm sure it's also going to help get our name out. Um, but we're going to offer up a 20% discount on all of our inspection fees. So our typical inspection fees for electrical are 80 bucks. Uh, an inspection fee for solar is 80 bucks. Um, if we combine it and we do the electric and the solar um, on the same house, you know, we'll do the entire thing at, at, one, at 145, um, but we'll offer a 20% discount if you mention uh, this podcast or Titan Real Estate and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely help you guys out. Awesome. So Awesome. JP, how can we get a hold of you? Oh, you can get a hold of me everywhere. Just Google JP Fluel and you can find me. You're not going to struggle through the Clixo thing anymore? <laughs> thing anymore. All, all of my social stuff is at clickso.com forward slash J Fluellen. So you can find me on social. You, dude, if you're watching this, you know me. So just, just Google it. So we appreciate you watching though. Thanks. Yeah. Cool, guys. Appreciate um, Travis. Thanks for coming on. It was a great conversation. Learned a lot about solar. Um, if anyone has any questions, definitely go to Travis. He's going to be the guy to talk to. Um, and next week, we're going to have another guest. Um, same idea, featuring top agents or industry professionals just to learn their insight to help us be better agents, sell more homes, and spend less time doing it. Um, now, if you want to be a guest, feel free to reach out to me or JP. Uh, my email address is chris.successagent at gmail.com or you can just reach out through the Facebook page. Um, I manage that. So we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, until then, we'll see you next week. Thanks guys. Thanks Travis. Yeah.